Hey guys, so I do have to make a follow-up video on uh, the altcoins um, I have um, suggested as being a good investment because I noticed that I can't make the decision myself to make those investments myself and I always I do believe that actions speak louder than words so my actions has been that I have only invested in Bitcoin and then after that in NXT and um, after that in clumps and after that I have not invest in, in any cryptocurrencies anymore uh, although I have been looking a lot the past year uh, the past two years but especially the past year after uh, uh, coming from my own like uh, pedestal and um, euphoric and unrealistic feelings about my big investment in NXT and then the other one clumps like both of them I have discovered also have their weaknesses and things didn't go as I had hoped and I have lost a lot of bitcoins but also made some mistakes myself um, so but but it's also been a very good process for me because it has really forced me to uh, become more critical towards my own actions and own beliefs and that way I have discovered like what I have done wrong um, and also what was wrong uh, with NXT and clumps, uh, what was missing. And, and so with that knowledge, I, I've been looking for other coins, and but I noticed that they have the same issues um, or other issues. And so that's why uh, it's for me very hard to invest in Ethereum, Dash and Monero, even though I think those are very good coins to diversify bitcoins into um, they belong in the top but still I don't find them good enough um, why well ethereum uh, is 700 million but it doesn't have any real utility huh? that means like bitcoin is used by people to pay for stuff um, okay that was not in the start in the start it was just an investment vehicle and people would uh, say, hey, actually, we should use it to pay for stuff and would basically do a fake transaction. OK, I'll buy a pizza for you from you or alpaca socks. But it's but it, later it was actually became really useful in the dark markets. And Monero, for example, does have traction now in the dark market. So that's really positive. It starts to being used. But. And, and that's thanks to the innovation it has that it offers more privacy. So that's very well done. But um, the problems I see in Monero is, is, is the same as I see in Bitcoin and the same as I see in NXT and in Clumps uh, is that, well, um, well, actually not NXT and Clowns because proof of stake coins, but I think the biggest problem in Bitcoin is not privacy. I don't hear people complaining about privacy. Even in the dark markets, people are using Bitcoin. Um, um, but uh, okay, I, 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 I can't judge if they... It is a hassle to have enough privacy, that's true. And Monero does offer uh, an extra there, but um, is it the big feature? that the people want. Huh? Monero community claims that it is absolutely required to keep fungibility, but um, up until today, Bitcoin is uh, very fungible, uh, even though it is an open ledger and all transactions can be traced. Um, uh, there is no different price for different Bitcoins. Huh? Uh, so, um, uh, so it's not there yet, but it's true that it may happen. It becomes less fungible if, if certain addresses are blacklisted or banned. And, 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 and so that certain Bitcoins, if they are, for example, have been used in dark markets, that they are less valuable or when they are just mined, that they are more valuable. But you don't see that market yet. So it's not the case yet. So up until today, Bitcoin is actually still is fungible. Um, 
the biggest problem Bitcoin is not fungibility, it's scalability. And um, that's really a problem. Um, and does Monero solve that? No, it's just the same structure as Bitcoin. It's a proof of work coin. And I think the, uh, without any uh, governance structure or business model. And, and I think the, these are the causes of Bitcoin not being scalable. Uh, that, that's that, why is it not scalable? Why, why is the block size not raised? There are actually good reasons for that because the inflation is going down in Bitcoin and they do need an extra source of income for the miners to have enough hashing power to secure the network because miners only uh, mine based on how much they can earn. So right now the inflation in Bitcoin is maybe 4%, will go down 3, 2, 1% and less. And so that means that the network is only secured for 4%, 3%, 2%, 1% and less. And so it becomes easier and easier to do a 51% attack. Um, but indeed, if you like, um, uh, the way it's, that's being, being solved in Bitcoin is that, well, actually you have to start competing for a transaction, you have to pay transaction fees. And so the transaction fee income is going up a lot and compensating for the loss in inflation. So that way Bitcoin remains secured, but it does mean that you, uh, um, that you uh, need to create a fee market as they are doing and that you need to limit the amount of transactions that are possible because otherwise people won't pay a fee. Uh, and, um, and, 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 and another problem is that, um, well, the amount of transactions is not raised. Um, uh, and, um, uh, and, and, and so I think the cause here is that, um, uh, I've been talking about this in previous videos also, please, um, if you want to know more about it, look at them. Um, um, I've ma been making videos for two years about proof of stake. And I think uh, it is actually coming back with a vengeance today, although the market isn't realizing it yet and isn't valuing it yet, proof of stake. But uh, that's the real solution to having a scalable cryptocurrency. You need more than proof of stake, but that's the first step. Um, because proof of work is just very expensive to secure a network. And so either you have a high inflation or you have high transaction costs or, um, uh, and that's just a given, um, that's unavoidable. Um, so, uh, but it's, um, it's worse than that. I mean, um, the problem right now in Bitcoin is that actually it's at risk of failing because the value of Bitcoin comes, is speculative. People put money into Bitcoin because they believe that um, it will uh, become a um, much more important cryptocurrency currency in the future. But if the amount of transactions is limited, that will not happen. Um, it, some, some people think that it can be just di digital gold. Um, but uh, that means that even if that's successful, then there will be other cryptocurrencies that are a lot bigger, that are used by the common man. So um, that also means that Bitcoin will not um, continue to be the biggest cryptocurrency. Uh, it, but that's even if they are right, uh, because they might may be wrong, and it may be that um, it it will not even be digital gold, and 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 the the, the, the currency for the common man will actually be the digital gold. Um, so. Um, why is this happening in Bitcoin? In my opinion, it's happening because um, the, uh, the, the core devs are not doing uh, scaling Bitcoin because they are not being paid. Um, and, uh, and so they want to have a system where they are paid, which is very normal. And so uh, by building a, a, a network on top of it, they solve that problem. But at the same time, it means that the value of the Bitcoins themselves is at risk because, um, or the security of Bitcoin, um, one of them, um, because um, if it's off chain, even if it's on a chain that's hooked into Bitcoin, then still um, the value of that other network goes up and not the value of Bitcoin. It goes up, but a lot less than if it would be directly on the Bitcoin blockchain. 
Um, and also, um, there is no extra security for the network. So you're building more value on the Bitcoin network while not increasing, uh, while not while keeping the security of network low. So 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 so, so that won't work. And and that's again due to proof of work. And so. Um, uh, what you would need in a, in a good coin is a cheaper, like if you want to have a cheap currency, you need a cheap way to secure the transactions and secure the network. And that's proof of stake. Um, and even if proof of stake has weaknesses, you can compensate that also with a proof of involve a proof of work. Um, and you don't need, but in, in that case, if you mix both, you can reduce the cost a lot. Another thing that's really required is that developers and marketeers are being paid by the network, that the incentives are aligned between developers uh, and people that work for the coin and between coin holders, that they both profit if the coin goes up and that they both are doing well and that they are both doing poorly if the coin does not go up or stays flat or goes down. That's very important and it's not the case right now. It's not the case in Bitcoin. It's not the case in Monero. These people, these devs are paid up with donations. So they do a lot of valuable work. The coin goes up a lot in value. Do they get paid for that? Maybe they get some donations, but the donations will not be, totally not be. In, 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 in um, uh, comparable to the value they create. It will be a lot lower uh, uh, and it will not feel just for them. And so, um, so, so, so that's what I'm missing also uh, in, in Monero. Um, but what I'm also missing, and, uh, but Dash has this, that's good, but then Dash doesn't have the mixing of transactions automatically. But Dash has another good thing. Well, what Dash misses, misses then for me is you also need that, that actually the coin holders have decision power. Uh, it's not just the developers, actually. The developers, you can see them as the CEO of the company, but they, in a company structure, like are not they actually, the power structure is so that actually the shareholders hold the power and can fire the CEO and the developers he hires. Eh? Um, and so if, if, the, if the developer, uh, uh, of course, uh, and that's very important, I think, um, and that's missing. Coin holders have no say whatsoever in Bitcoin about decisions made that the core devs make. Um, and... People say that, yeah, but that's not necessary. It's the miners that ha decide. They have the, the power uh, uh, and they can actually, um, if CoreDevs makes decisions, they can choose to not um, build on that chain or uh, and build on another chain. And, and, and that way another uh, CoreDev team can take over. But uh, this is not, uh, 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 this is too late. Uh, uh, if that happens, you will have a split as what happened in Ethereum and you will have two coins because the core devs are not going to stop developing the coin. Eh? So they continue and then you have a new team and some miners go to there and then you have basically two coins. And that would be like a company uh, splitting up into two companies. Uh, and so co coin holders can, uh, shareholders can never vote if they, if they don't like it, they can copy the company and start another company. Um, uh, but they can't influence the decisions made by the CEO. Um, well, you know, I, I really believe that the success of the company structure is because economic benefits um, are linked to the political power. That's why a for-profit company works and a non-profit company works much less good. And for a non-profit company, um, the, the, the boss doesn't need to justify his actions to the shareholders. Um, but in a for-profit company, he, he needs to. There are shareholders. And so, um, and the one that 
puts the value in also um, decides, has the final decision power about what's happening. And linking these two makes for the best decisions. That's why a capitalistic system ends up being um, more, more successful and creates more value for the people that live in it than a socialistic or communistic system. And, 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 and so in cryptocurrency, this has not sank through, but it is showing clearly how dysfunctional it is if you have a for non-profit structure. Um, it means that um, very poor decisions are made without any recourse for the, for the economic benefactors, uh, for the coin holders. They have no say whatsoever. The core dev makes decisions that totally destroys the value of the coin. Well, you know, the coin holders, the only thing they can do is sell their coins. But they can't, influ can't influence the decisions. And um, so <clears throat> Monero doesn't have that, but also Dash does not have that. Dash is not, does not have actually proof of stake. I was wrong in that. It does have a system where with the coins you can set up a node and you can mix. If people want a, a mix to mix coins, they will do that via you and you also get paid. 30% of the inflation goes to these people. But And, and they can actually also vote on, 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 on the grant system. And there is 10% going to... Um, to people that propose things and 10% of the inflation eh, uh, goes to pay for these people most of it goes to the developers uh, but uh, that's a good system but the power of the coin holders is only to say okay you get some money for this project or you get some others but the power of the coin holders is not about um, if they make a, pro a protocol change that it needs to be approved, for example, uh, by coin holders, no, the, 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 the lead def uh, can decide whatever he wants to and, and the coin holders can't um, vote for it, they can't fire uh, the, the, the lead def. And so um, uh, that's the structure even in Dash. Um, so. I think that cryptocurrencies, um, yeah, n need these things to be successful, and so, um, yeah, that's why I I, I, I can't get over investing uh, in in Dash or in Monero or in Ethereum. Another very important aspect is the price, because as an investor. I have to look for depressed coins. Coins that are successful, I missed, I'm too late. There's, that's just, it is too risky. Um, it doesn't matter if it has good fundamentals. You also need a good price. And so even though Ethereum, Dash and Monero have each are a leader in a segment and have a good chance to go up in the next Bitcoin bubble, their price is not, compared to many other altcoins, interesting because they haven't got, gotten a depression yet. Everybody, a lot of people are still very positive about these projects. Monero especially has just basically the past two years 20 folded. It's now 100 million market cap. It was 150 or 200 million uh, one, two months ago, but it's coming from 5 million two years ago. So all these people have made a lot of money and are convinced that they have a perfect coin and that has no problems and that they will take over the world. And But if you look at um, the amount of transactions, it has actually been flat in Monero and has only gone up after the price has gone up. And it looks like uh, actually the price has gone up a lot more or more than the amount of transactions. And, and these transactions are very likely all speculative with the exception of a little bit of real transactions on the first dark market where Monero is accepted. And that's a very good thing. But um, this can like drop tomorrow off the map, eh? uh, this dark market, and then the adoption of Monero is zero again. So it is very fragile. Um, 
And if it, even if it is successful, then they will hit upon the same problems that Bitcoin has, that it is not scalable uh, and that it is very expensive um, network. Uh, and that you can't, I, either you have a high inflation cost or you have a high transaction fees um, uh, f compared to the amount of transactions you can do on that network. And, and so <clears throat> due to a lack of a governance structure, and due to a lack of a business model, very likely you, you will get, um, they won't succeed in overcoming these problems. Even if they are a, a success like Bitcoin, very likely you will get internal conflicts and a split. Uh, and, 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 and that's not, I think, um, a, a good. But of course, the price is the biggest problem here. It just has gone up way too much um, compared to the amount of trans real transactions it has. Um, it just it's valued too highly, and and and, uh, and 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 it has yeah. It's it's not in a bear market. It's not even it's not in depression. It's in a full bull market, and I basically missed out on that. One. I have to accept that even if it goes times ten again in the next bull market, I'm just too late compared to uh, other coins. Uh, and the same is, well, certainly true for Ethereum. I mean, it's 700 million. Yeah, it was almost double, but it's coming from 30 million two years ago. So it has also done times 20 still today. And yeah, uh, Dash um, also is not cheap. Um, it also has, to my knowledge, no real utility. It doesn't, in contrast... Well, you don't really need Dash for anything. Uh, you can do it all with Bitcoin. And actually, the same is still true for Monero. You can do it all with Bitcoin too. So, but you don't have that much privacy. But it's all, a coin really becomes only truly outstanding when, it, when you can't do it with Bitcoin, when it has succeeded in having a USP, unique selling point, but that results in unique utility. Um, and for Ethereum, we still have to wait and see if, uh, if they succeed. Because I've seen this before many times, eh? a, a, a platform, NXT was like that too. Oh, wow, eh? we're going to build decentralized apps on this. And you see a lot of ICOs, eh? people raising money. But uh, yeah. All those projects can indeed fail, um, and, and and even the, the the platform itself can fail. So um, it's very high risk, especially at this price. Uh, but of, but all of these coins, that's why I made the previous video, do have very strong brand recognition because they have been the leading altcoins and uh, have indeed done great so if we get the next bubble they have a very good chance to go up more than bitcoin but as an investor a, a great investor goes looking for really undervalued coins that means they have very good fundamentals and they are not priced for it not like questionable fundamentals and priced pretty well uh, which is to my which is you can really make a case for all of these coins that they do have also problematic fundamentals and that they are priced quite high. Um, so, I, I really wanted to make this video because I think that's very important. Um, so that I decided not to uh, invest in those, uh, but I also decided not to invest more in NXT, Ardor, and Clumps. But I have been investing a lot in these coins the past uh, two years, and my allocation currently is 50% Bitcoin, and so Bitcoin is going really up a lot right now, and it's uh, $870. So the last day, it broke 800 and it's like to 870 So. It's really starting to go up parabolically and you see that all altcoins are being punished hard. So it is a really great time to invest in altcoins. But for me, the difficulty is to find them. 
Uh, and but I'm currently at 50-50 Bitcoin altcoin, and actually that's more than enough. Um, uh, I mean, in the last bubble, 2013, the first bubble I didn't have any altcoins, and the second bubble in 2013 I, I, I did have uh, like 10% altcoins compared to 90% Bitcoin and those did very well so so I'm convinced that um, it is a good time but I'm more than enough exposed to it so I really don't need to buy any more altcoins but I do admit that my timing was wrong I should have done that right now and XCR there is five to ten times cheaper than it has been uh, or at least five times cheaper on average uh, compared to the price I've been buying in and, and clumps, um, well, that's been doing pretty good. Even though the price in Bitcoin has gone down a lot, there is um, a high inflation uh, that you can, because it's proof of stake coin, you can just uh, stake that coin yourself and then you don't feel that inflation because you get a piece of that inflation yourself. Um, and uh, uh, if you take that into account, it's been uh, an okay uh, investment actually. Uh, but it's price very low the market cap is 1.5 million and if you look at uh, just dice where you need it for if you want to gamble um that 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 is a very reputable website that uh, at the time uh, was uh, the leading gambling website uh, when it was still accepting bitcoins and um has done some great innovations in provable gambling and uh and uh, actually at one point managed uh, about 50 million dollars worth of Bitcoin uh, so the total market cap of clams being only 1.5 million is, is, is way below what, uh, what Justice has proven already in the past to be worth so I do believe there's an opportunity there and I do actually start to value NXT and Ardor more again realizing that the scalability issues of Bitcoin are uh, really actually being solved by NXT already because it was a proof of stake coin but even more so by Ardor who goes even further and is really um, yeah doing big changes um, uh, to make it even more scalable and so uh, it may actually um, it may go up a lot and if you would build a new coin it may be very wise to actually build on order and not do a proof of work coin. Um, so the technical foundation was very good there, but they are weak on the marketing level. Uh, that's true. Uh, very weak. Um, uh, and, and clumps, of course, also there is no marketing whatsoever. But that's, that's, of course, what an investor is looking for. That is, well, you know, if... If they are very good in marketing, very likely they are very good in marketing the value of their stock too. And, and so it's most of the time valued pretty well. Um, if they are poor in marketing, that may certainly be a problem in adoption of their coin. But it often shows also in the value of their coins. And that's certainly the case here too. Um, so, so that's, I do believe, is, is an opportunity. But there are other coins too. I, I suggest you take also a look, for example, at Decrypt. I think they have very good fundamentals. They are also only valued at 1.5 million. Uh, and um, they have a system where it's a proof of work coin, but only 60% of the inflation goes to proof of work. They also have proof of stake. 30% of the inflation goes to proof of stakers. And so they do a mix. And 10% of the inflation goes to the development team. And so I think that's a, a very... And they also have a, like... Power to the stakeholders. Important protocol changes need to be done, uh, need to be approved by the coin holders uh, or up for vote. Um, so I think those are much better fundamentals than Dash, Monero, or, um, well, Ethereum for me, I I've decided not to invest mainly because I really want to focus on cryptocurrency. I, I want to really succeed in investing in the coins or even building the coins that are going to be mass adopted and I no longer believe that that's going to be a crypto platform or even um, it could maybe be an up coin eh? like if the next Facebook a successful Twitter's Facebook or WhatsApp 
the next successful app that also introduces a coin that may be a success but i think right now that i will be much better served in like probably a coin in order to be successful it needs to really focus on only being a currency and that's what i really like actually about monero and dash they really are focused on that bitcoin too um uh, and and the problem for me with ethereum is mm, well, you know, with my experience with NXT, I've, I've realized that if you want to build a decentralized platform um, as well as a currency, it's, it's, it's difficult. Um, um, it's a challenge to build a successful decentralized app. It's a, it's a, a challenge on sich. And so I think it's, too, it's, it's asking for, it's, 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 too, it's too much. Wanting a successful decentralized app and a successful decentralized coin in one, I think it's better to just focus on one of them. And so that's why, like, I do believe decentralized plot, crypto platforms, some of them will be successful and it may certainly be Ethereum, Ardor too. But in the long term, I really want to focus on uh, coins. And so that's why I decide not to like look at Ethereum and also not Lisk, for example. Uh, and there are some other uh, crypto platforms. I, I'm just not gonna like invest in that anymore. Um, so voila. Um, that's uh, the story. Uh, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's helpful. Um, and um, I wish you all a happy new year, that's soon new year, uh, a lovely Merry Christmas and um, I will also make a video uh, of a review of the year and, um, and an outlook for of course 2017 uh, if I find the time. Bye guys!